Welcome back to Bear Hobby. So we've got a unboxing and a review on this Procon Boy airbrush that I picked up from Japan. Another trigger type airbrush from Mr. Hobby. Um, with the this time we've got a 0.5 millimeter uh, needle, and um, so everything's in Japanese. But I think I might have a solution using this translate tool. If I focus on the camera and then I bring this in here, let's see if we can translate some of the text. Right, it's saying uh, capture can be done with large capacity, 15. Uh, that's the first bit. Um, blow with two types of air caps, change the pattern. So it's talking about these two caps here. Let's have a look what that text is. Air up mechanism. It says low pressure compressors, such as Mr. Linear Compressor, a sophisticated compressor from the cap to stabilize pressure stability. Equip the air up mechanism. Ooh, don't know what that is. Um, the burden on the fingers, fewer triggers. It's talking about the trigger action. Now, I do know this, and this is one of the features that I got this for, is um, you've got a flat blower. I think what they mean is a fan pattern. And air cap location, you can change it to get two different patterns. And then here, what does the text say? It says um, a cap. Cap, norm, normal cap, you know, the normal operation and then needle stopper easy to operate and a one eighth um, fine conversion for joints and hoses so it's got the converter for the hoses so let's open up the box actually let's have a look to see what else it says here uh, just using this um, technique so, so these are just adverts for their other compressors I suppose there isn't much there um, as a hand grip as a draining tool that's the um, different drains that you can get or moisture traps and let's see what it says on the side here and get this text to translate um, spraying oh what did it say spray the trigger is pulled out oh it's changing it to in light on the finger a particular large area and long painting is improved oh it's a bit gobbledygook i think it's sort of saying it covers large areas but anyways we've got a bit of that so let's open up the box and see what we've got inside quite sturdy boxing um i'm gonna sort of rip it open because uh it's just a lot easier that way <laughs> and you do get a, i remember from the other pro convoy you do get a proper case inside so i'm not really too worried okay so there we are yeah you do get a proper box to store the airbrush in let's open this up and see what we have here is the airbrush it is nice and weighty actually oh it's got a really nice weight to it and look at that there you go it's at the moment it's got the fan pattern on there Let's see how that comes off like so then you've got the let's call it the normal nozzle cap Let's put this back on just for now. Don't want to damage anything to start this off with. <coughs> you've usually, as usual, you've got your little spanner that's used to take off the um, the nozzle during maintenance. And as you would expect from an airbrush that's designed for larger areas, you've got this bigger 15cc cup. 
these have got a top mounting you can actually add paint inside here in this little reservoir if you're going to cover small areas but that screws on so it isn't like a push in and that even adds more weight to it pretty chunky chunky piece of kit this one and then inside here this is an adapter to use with compressed air cans you know that bottled air cans that you can buy that goes on top we'll never use it ever and uh, likewise here's the this is the cable or the com cable it's the air supply that you'd use with compressed air cans and that needs to be adapted to go into there that's all sort of screws on it's ready to go but we use our normal mount so this comes off of here oops and that's basically our components i'll just get them out show them to you so normal normal nozzle cap fan pattern the box itself i've lost the little wrench it's inside here so we can dig it out and then also we have instructions and a leaflet so we'll get our little translation tool out again and we'll have a read through to see what it says in a minute but let's do a disassembly on the airbrush so as usual we take off the paint reservoir we unscrew this rear this is the uh, this is um, how you can adjust the trigger action I better just demonstrate that to you trigger action airbrush means that the first detent is air and the second portion is paint and don't get confused that you can control the air because you can't this is just a switch so you've got air on then paint you can't adjust the air paint sort of some people think you can but you can't the difference between the single action is that you pull back you've got air and paint immediately and i'll just demonstrate how this works as well at the back here this is the trigger is stopped if we loosen off this adjusting screw at the rear then the trigger can go back further and further and as you push it you wind it up so that limits the sort of spray the amount well it doesn't limit the spray it limits the amount of paint that can come up and through because it restricts the needle movement but let's uh, take all that off different ways to assemble, disassemble and reassemble airbrushes but this is the way I always do it needle comes out the back there you can actually see it's actually quite blunt it hasn't got a sharp tip at all because it's 0.5 millimeter and then at the front we've got this fan pattern and there's the nozzle itself so if you were to disassemble this but we're not going to what you do is very carefully use this spanner that clicks it there and you loosen it off but don't do it unless you have to and really the only time you ever have to take that off is when it needs replacing because it's a softer i don't know what it is what the material is but it's a lot softer than the needle it's not like a hard steel it's a very soft metal 
and it's very fine and it's easily damaged so you don't split that so that's your basic strip you can take down these other components I think I've got a, a um, airbrush repair video in which I do that but this is where you strip down to for your normal day to day cleaning let's just put it back together again um, be very careful when you insert the needle I use my finger here like so just to guide the needle and then push it through never force it it'll go through you just see it come through the end there to the cap then this retains the needle so that means that the needle goes back and forth then we can put on let's put on the the other nozzle the other um, the normal one or the, what they call it the circular pattern one so that's a retainer now it's mentioned something about airflow adjuster and I have no idea what they meant by that I'm going to look into that. We'll look into that as we read through the instructions. Final part, and um, to be honest, I leave this off quite often on my airbrushes because if you clean them, you see, I don't use this feature of um, limiting paint flow. I find it um, a little bit cumbersome for the way I airbrush. But, um, oh my gosh, I'm having trouble. There we go. Right. So there we are, reassembled. Just loosen that off. So I like it to be there so it's got the full travel. These components we don't need, we can put them back in the box. And of course, let's have a read through the instructions next. And then I'm going to give you a, uh, a proper review of how it performs by spraying something. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the instructions that come with the Mr. Hobby Pro Convoy LWA trigger type. I don't know what LWA stands for. I'll probably work it out eventually. But um, this one is, it's got the call out in English, which is this section view of the airbrush showing you a view, a cross section of the airbrush and how it works and it just names all the components and it's got some specifications here the nozzle calibre 0.5 we knew that it's got a cup capacity of 15 cc's we knew that as well the operation is a trigger type double action we know that and the paint supplying is gravitation system which means that it isn't sucked up from underneath it just goes down under the gravity um, and then there's accessories nothing really of any merit there let's have a look at this this is um, installation in case of using mr. air mr. air is mr. hobby's cans of air and it just tells you how to hook it all up and it's in English language as well and I suppose really if you're gonna buy an airbrush uh, such as this one and I call these medium um, they're, they're not low quality I'd say medium high um, you're not going to be using cans of air you're going to be getting a compressor so you're not going to get the benefit of the thing believe me um, it just shows how to set it up nothing special and then it says in case of using Mr. Linear Compressor blah 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 everything's in Japanese Okay, painting, operation one, two, three. What is this here? Okay, right, this is, it's again in English. It's telling you, look at the needle stopper from the back and loosen by, okay, so it's telling you to loosen that off. Lightly pull the trigger, emits air only. Once you pull the trigger back farther, the airbrush emits paint. Once the trigger feels heavy against your finger, which is what they mean is that these have got a detent, they've got a double detent. First, that like easy press is air and it's got a definite stop. And then paint is the second detent. So it's got that very definite on off there, air on, air off. But I'll give you a demo of that 
when we actually hooked up to our compressor. Um, da -da -da. Note, when you pull the needle stop all the way clockwise, the airbrush emits only air. When you pull the trigger, when you pull the needle stop all the way counterclockwise, the airbrush emits a large amount of paint when you pull the trigger, which is pretty straightforward. So, it does tell you about these caps. The next point, loosen the cap ring, then turn the air cap to the protrusion to set it in place. So, what it's saying is this. Let's put on the other cap. And what you do is, because this can swivel round, you can set it like so or like so. And you do that by not fully tightening that, but getting it a little bit before this, it's gonna bite get it vertical, then turn it, and then that's locked. You can't actually turn it anymore. Loosen that off, and then turn it like so, and then lock it, and then you've got the other pattern. You could have it any angle you want, in theory, but usually you're gonna go up with the fan pattern or side to side with the fan pattern, and I suppose it's your own preference on how you use that. I've never used fan pattern, so, um, it's meant to be very good for glossing, from what I've heard, um, for the application of glosses, uh, varnishes, etc. And, uh, and maybe other applications. I need to do a bit of research on that. Um, uh, make sure that the two small holes inside the protrusion of the wide spray air cap are not obstructed. So, inside here, oh... There must be two small holes. And I can see one just there, and there's the other. So air comes out that way. That's how it creates the fan pattern, changing the air cap. Um, the unit is shipped with a wide spray air cap. Loosen, yeah, we know how to do that. How to dilute the paint? And it's going to reference, everything's going to be Mr. Hobby, so it says about Mr. Color. Mr. Color being took thick as it is, diluted with Mr. Color Thinner, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Hobby Color can spray as it is, stir up the paint well. What it means is there's two brands of, uh, no, there isn't, there's one brand of paint, um, but there's two versions. They've got an acrylic, which is called Mr. Hobby, um, and now they call it accretion, and they say that you can spray that straight out of the, the, the uh, jar and then Mr. Color, which is what I like, which is like the Alaka requires dilution. Um, and it tells you how to wide area spray, use the air cap, the wide spray air cap, spray the air hard, turn the needle stopper to the left, keep away more than 10 centimeters. So it's telling you how to, how to, to do that spraying. Um, Using a fine line and spot spraying, use the normal spray air cap, squeeze the air, turn the needle stopper to the right, draw near up to five millimeters away so it's been closer. So we'll do all that demonstration and it actually tells you some common airbrush type problems of the characteristics. You can read all about that in your own time, um, but we're not going to cover that in this video. We're looking more at the airbrush. And it's telling me this next section is how to how to spray. Um, and it says if you use the wide spray cap, 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters, using the normal one millimeter to 20 centimeters. Um, for a wide spray, always maintain the same distance while moving the airbrush in a right angle along the paint surface to avoid an uneven coat. Be sure to maintain the same distance from the paint surface while moving the airbrush so excellent illustration of how to do it and how not to do it so it's saying that if you spray you move your whole arm back and forth not like this but parallel caution for spraying pour the paint into the cup and cover with the cap blah, blah, blah. make test sprays um, 
for the thick painting spray paint several times after each complete after complete drying in case of paint sting inside the air cap spraying may not work properly solve this make a test spraying for cleaning the paint off so pretty uh, solid advice there from in, in this book let's go on to the final pages um, maintenance after use so you've used the airbrush what do you do in the next stage pour the, rem the remained paint into an empty bottle and wipe off the paint well inside the cup um, and then it's washing by reverse spraying which is um, uh, the way that I clean out airbrushes and I'll give you a demo of all this pour Mr. Color Thinner or Mr. Tool Cleaner into the cup loosen the cap ring and pull out the air cap do not remove the air cap. To clean, turn the needle stop to the left, then pull the trigger to reverse the airflow inside the nozzle. It's actually blow back, that's what they're suggesting to wash out, which is a pretty good method. Um, repeat the washing several times. After cleaning, tighten the cap ring to its root wash clean. In case of cleaning in, de in detail, remove the air cap and wash by a brush. So make sure also to clean the two small holes inside the protrusion of the widespread crap. cap. Um, do not pull out the needle. Do not remove the nozzle. Mm, disagree with that. You definitely want to pull out the needle. Um, caution. Do not carelessly remove the paint nozzle. The paint nozzle is an extreme delicate part, as I mentioned, and may bend out of shape during removal, so we don't do that. Do not immerse the airbrush unit in a thinner. Poor operation uh, result when you immerse the airbrush in a thinner due to damage gaskets and lub removing lubricating oil um i do that sometimes i do i did it with my oil a lot i just dunked it i used to keep it in a very strong solvent um just because i was doing so much stuff but i don't anymore um ooh, checkpoint on an unusual occasion i like this sort of japanese english translation it's better than nothing because you can work out what it means but what they're talking about, it's like a, um, it's like a problem solver. So it's telling you unusual cause measures to be taken. So a problem, what the cause is and how you rectify it. Not spraying normality by paint leaking from the nozzle. A bend, or a, and the cause may be a bend, a broken tip, blah, 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 blah. Spraying none, a little paint, paint nozzle is clogged. Or a needle chock screw, blah, 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 blah. So it's got all the tips. How to remedy them, repair or change the parts, turn the spring case, washer exchange, tighten, blah, 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 blah. So it's got all that uh, information inside there. Pretty good, pretty comprehensive. Um, lots of airbrushes come with no information whatsoever. But there's plenty of air, there's plenty of airbrushing videos out there. So um, you, you don't tend to struggle that much. And this is all in Japanese the entire thing Mr. Hobby and it's got these nice illustrations um, it looks a little bit more comprehensive on how to clean paint etc I'll have a look through on the translator and see if there's anything that I need to bring your attention to if not we can go straight to the demo okay there was one bit of text that I thought was really relevant on here and it's this guy he's upset um, at something and it says Q and answer so what is he actually talking about I'll show you exactly what he's talking about he's talking about let's see if we can get this text to work please work this time oh where are you <laughs> right uh, the last time I painted I could use it normally for some reason this time the paint it was gone so he's upset. Right, what happened? Let's see. Oh, please wait. Right, most air maintenance after most of the troubles of airbrush. Insufficient maintenance since last use is the cause. Cleaning the airbrush correctly. Absolutely spot on. That is absolutely right as well. And, um, one of the biggest myths is that uh, you don't get blockages um, after you clean an airbrush. That's wrong. You usually get blockages after you have cleaned it because it loosens up the gunk and then you've stored it and then you go to spray and that's when you get your blockages and they're absolutely spot on there. So that, I just wanted to call that one out for you. 
Okay guys, we'll go across to now the uh, actual test of these airbrush and I did find out something um, earlier in the Japanese writing it mentioned some sort of booster the thing with these um, the fan airbrushes is they need a lot more pressure and a lot more reserve of air to create that fan pattern and this has got some sort of booster I don't know how they do it maybe a Venturi or some sort of design in there but using a standard compressor so just a normal tank compressor not a larger industrial type one with a big big tank you still should be able to get this um this fan pattern so i'm going to operate at 30 psi and let's just spray this um this red ak paint and see how we get on i'm just going to check the airflow just go neat into the Let's see how this works. You can see I've got it on the uh, on that alignment at the moment, so you can adjust that to see how you feel. But it is nice and wide. So let's uh, go straight across. Let's adjust it now. And do a little bit more. It is really broad. I mean, this is only, this airbrush is purely for these large coverage of surfaces. I'm very impressed with it straight away, straight out the, uh, out the gauge. Look at that coverage. <coughs> Nothing really more to add on that. Fan coverage, obviously it does the job, yeah? Really big, wide pattern. Let's put the other nozzle on now and see um, if we've got any finesse at all with this um, large coverage type airbrush. Okay, so now to test this, so I put on the standard nozzle, uh, nozzle cap, um, the fan sprays there. Um, I've ramped down the pressure down to 15. I was operating it previously on 30 for the fan pattern. Let's see if we can get any degree of finesse and see even if we can get an output with it at 15 psi and see what the coverage is using the standard attachment well first things first it operates perfectly well at 15 psi there's no splatter Well, I'm very impressed. You can get quite a fine pattern actually. It does make this nearly a dual purpose. Not as fine as a, you know, Iwata 0.3 or a Badger 0.3, but really, um, I'm surprised that we've got a airbrush that does that big wide fan pattern. And also for what we do, which is military vehicles, modeling aircraft, that sort of thing this would be more than adequate for dual put and you can see how wide it goes as well look at that flare out there I'm obviously you need to be finessed but the um, the trigger is nicely you know precision engineered I like to call it and I was trying to explain this before about what's the difference between cheap and expensive airbrushes it's in the precision of these parts and that allows you to have more dexterity and control whilst airbrushing and um, and really I mean if you want to be good at airbrushing you need to have that control so Yeah, I'm very, very impressed with this airbrush. Um, my intentions were to use it just for these sort of flat coats, using it for primers and um, and maybe uh, for applying the, the varnishes, etc. But as you can see, with a little bit of practice,
this airbrush will do it all so um, yeah I'm very very impressed with this very impressed hope you enjoy the review um, gonna see some more I do love my airbrushes so we'll see some more airbrush reviews come shortly um, stay tuned to the channel subscribe comment please if you've got any questions um, and enjoy